we are going to talk about um, specification of uh, distributed abstractions. So, how we specify a service? This is our question. To do this, we have to distinguish between two parts of a service, a declarative specification of the service, and then implementation of that service. Um, we said we are going to define services by components. And components has interfaces, as we know. These interfaces are of request type or response type. Request is uh, request our input events and responses are uh, output events from a component. We're also going to describe give we're going to describe the properties of these components. And the properties has to be described in terms of the events it accepts and the events that it emits. Huh? So that is, and we will see that we will be able to describe these components, these properties either as safety properties or liveness properties. We are going to talk more about safety and liveness properties, but we will see that the properties of component can be described by safety and liveness properties. We will also going to be able to specify completely the service to have an assumption about what type of distributed model we are uh, assuming this component to run in. What are the assumptions on failures? What are assumptions on timings? Is the system a synchronous or asynchronous system? So what we have said now is what we call a declarative um, specification of a service. A service described by its input output events, its properties, and the assumptions on the underlying distributed model. In addition, we are going to have an imperative implementation of that service. Hmm? And this is tell us how to implement the service. The implementation will be composed components that use other components, so it's composed of other services, and it will um, adhere to the interface and satisfy the correctness properties above. And we, of course, to satisfy the correctness property, we have to prove somehow, formally or informally, that it does, or test it. Okay. And, of course, uh, the implementation will have internal events. Here is an example of a service. We it's a very simple one. We call it a job handler. It's not distributed. It just consists of one component, one module. We, this module, let us see the way we're going to specify now things. Uh, we give it a name. We say it's, it's a job handler component. And when we, uh, when we create an instance of this module, we're going to refer it by GH here. What are the events that we have? We have an input event, which is a request to submit a job. So here is the notation. You have the instance of the module, the component. You have the event name, which is submit. And then you have the argument of the event, which is a job uh, that is requested to, to process, to be processed. And then we have an indication event, which is an output event indicating that the job has been done. So this will be an event called confirm, return back a job identifier here, the job, and confirm that the job has been um, uh, processed or will be processed. Hmm? So this is just describe the interface. It does not tell you what really this component does. To describe what this component does, we have to describe the properties of this component based on the relationship between the events that the component accepts or produces. And this is basically saying here's a property that we have, a property we call guaranteed response. Guaranteed response says 
if me every submitted job is eventually confirmed every submitted job is eventually confirmed we're going to look really to this a uh, little bit in detail and see what what we mean when we write a property like this okay so so what we have done we have defined the component of type job handler and it accepts an event which is submit a job and another event to confirm the um, processing confirm the processing of the job and we stated some property which says every submitted job will be eventually confirmed this we can describe by the following way we can just look we draw a line this line is somehow is time and some form of abstraction of events of an execution and this is saying if we submit a job here at some time t0 at some other time eventually we're going to get a confirm event so if this is job a we'll get a get we're going to get a confirm a at some time t1 greater than t0 so this is tell us that if we look to the sequence of events we are going to see submit events followed by confirm events we could have multiple submits like this submit B with confirm B. This is also legal. Every submitted event, uh, every submitted um, job will be confirmed. So this will be confirmed here, and this will be confirmed here. So for this system to work properly, this property has to hold. Here is a simple implementation of uh, a job handler and this is the notation that we use we say we, we create an instance this is a component it's called jh and then we have one single event handler and what does it do this event handler if the instance job handler gets a submit event with a job is the argument it will process the job and it will trigger again an event this will trigger an event this event is called confirm with a job a very simple implementation and this implementation you can see clearly that it if process job always succeeds that every submit event will be eventually produce an output event confirming it here is another possible implementation that um, implements, satisfies the specification, but implement the specification by an asynchronous job handler. An asynchronous job handler will basically accept jobs and in due time will process these jobs. Huh? So due time does not immediately process the job. So again, here is something that we interesting to see when we create a component out of this module specification is that quite often we are going to have uh, what we call an initialization event this is executed when the component is deployed or created and you can see here that the component that has a local state so it's very much like an object but it is a concurrent one because it receives messages which are events and produces messages which are again events so here is when we create this component we also create a, a local state variable that maintains a buffer and this buffer is initially empty and this is denoted by the empty set here whenever we submit a job here 
we add the job to the buffer and immediately trigger uh, a confirm event. So we can immediately trigger a confirm event saying that this job uh, has been accepted. Meanwhile, there's another event handler that is triggered by a condition and could execute in a completely different um, spectrum of time space. So this is saying that uh, whenever the buffer is not empty, this is interesting, is not empty. So upon the buffer is not empty, pick a job from the buffer, process the job, and remove this job from the buffer. So whenever the buffer is not empty, do that. So you can see this is another implementation. This implementation still satisfies the specification. Every submitted job will eventually be confirmed. Okay. Given our component, which presents a form of a service, this service just service to execute jobs, we can compose components together by writing another component and connecting it to this component. We will see how, how components are connected together later. But here is an example of a service that uses, uh, that is composed service. It's called a transformation handle, handler. Transformation handler does the following. Whenever you submit a job to it, it will transform the job to a form suitable to be executed by the job handler. And then submits the job to the job handler. Sometimes it fails to transform the job. And if it does, then it will trigger an error event, say this job cannot be transformed. Okay? If it succeeds, it will uh, submit the job to the job handler. And we know from the specification of the job handler that it will eventually confirm that. So whenever a job is submitted, it will be confirmed. But some jobs will never be submitted. You will, uh, during the transformation, there might um, e exist an error. 